so much for coming and visiting us in Nazareth Fencing Club in London. We're so glad that you're here and you're friends with the children. How do you like it here? Thank you for inviting. Uh, it's been great. I haven't been in London and it's good fencing here. Who did you fence yesterday? Yesterday I fenced um, multiple uh, boys. Leo was uh, uh, pretty good and uh, Cheney and also Alec all beat me in my last bout, so it was colorful. <laughs> so you started fencing at what age? I started fencing at the age of seven and it's, it became professional at around 14. And eventually you became Olympic vice champion in Tokyo. Also world champion. And world champion. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very proud of that too. <laughs> Home soil in Budapest in 2019. Yes. Which one are you more proud? The, the World Championship medal or the Olympic silver? There are only three people uh, in Hungary who has won in fencing uh, World Championship title in Budapest and I'm the third one of those in the past 60 years. So that, that one right now it's more, more, uh, more of a satisfaction. That's amazing. Now how does it feel to go to the Olympics, prepare for that and then just the night before to go to sleep? Is it very difficult? It is, it is. Um, I got to sleep before the Olympics, I remember that, uh, half around midnight, but I was very tense and I, tomorrow was a big day, but it was good. It's a good feeling. And now the Olympic uh, qualification just starts. How do you feel? How is your preparation at the moment? How much do you train? We train a lot, like twice a day and also the weekends. Um, it, it starts in a half year, uh, the Olympic qualification, but I think I'm, ready, I'm already uh, there uh, in the head and, and I'm preparing for it every day. Do you remember your first, very first fencing tournament? How old were you and how did it go? I do have the picture in my head when I'm holding the third place trophy. Um, I was two years younger than the other competitors, but uh, I managed to do well in groups, so I finished third. And it's just, uh, it started my career well. What advice would you give yourself, your nine years old self, to become a fencing champion? Uh, to believe in it and to be dedicated to the goal and to have the goals and to have your, uh, analyze yourself and just uh, training and practice a lot of things and be, be as colorful fencer as, can you, as you can be. So many advice. <laughs> so when you were like 9, 10, 11, how often per week, how, how many trainings did you have? How long? Three and four times, uh, three or four times I trained uh, during a week and uh, it was two hours approximately. How did you adjust your traveling to competition going to school, having a busy schedule and yet excellent in both studying and fencing. I was preparing a lot uh, in school for the next day. So when I had some free time, I did my homework that day or meanwhile I traveled, I did my homework and also I focused uh, during uh, the classes pretty much. So I just didn't have to learn so much afterwards. Mm. And when you go to a fencing competition, what is your routine normally? You arrive to your hotel, you go for dinner, do you always have the same meal? How, what, do you, uh, what advice do you give for young fencers to go to a fencing competition? How shall they prepare and how should they eat and sleep? If you have a fr I have a favorite meal before competition and it's like uh, loading my carbohydrates before uh, fencing competition, it's uh, pizza and uh, tomato soup and I eat them together and I, I would advise to have a favorite meal before a competition because that gives you confidence and calmness. Yeah. Next week at the World Cup everyone is going to have <laughs> pizza for sure. And now what is the next competition, where are you going? I'm traveling on Sunday and the next weekend I'm, I will be uh, fencing at the World Cup in Vancouver, both individual and teams. How do you deal with the stress when you go to fencing competition? How, how do you sleep or how do you manage to calm yourself also on the piece when you are fencing? I have prepared scenarios uh, for both winning and losing and staying focused. and. Uh, 
I think it's a game. You have to enjoy the game. So that's what I do. I always try to enjoy and uh, think about my friends that that they they support me and they they love what I do and uh, that was that give, gives me um, confidence. Yeah. Do you truly always feel confident, or sometimes you just fake it? I don't fake it. Sometimes I I uh, fall in disbelief also, and um, sometimes I have the lack of confidence. But uh, I always keep telling myself positive uh, things that it's okay, it's gonna be alright. So that's what I do a lot: uh, thinking and analyzing how I can be better. And uh, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm telling myself you can, you will be okay. What do you suggest for parents? How can they support their children? To become a fencing champion, how can they do the best job that they help their children? I think more importantly, uh, they have to give them responsibility. Um, they should uh, pack their own stuff. They should know where it is, where, you, where their t-shirts and stuff is. Also, they have to ask them if they want to represent the, their country on the long run. They want to be world champion and fence at uh, these uh, big events. I think it's a, a, a huge honor to represent your country and I love the feeling of both uh, World Championship Olympics. So you should talk to uh, the kids I think uh, about what they want and also give them responsibility to, to do it. And would you ever uh, change anything over the last competitions? I would. I, uh, For example, the Olympics final. When you think back, what would you do different? Sometimes I have nightmares about it. I don't feel like I, I made mistakes. Uh, I was a bit overconfident in the final. I was um, released a bit because I made a medal. Uh, but I think making mistakes is a progress of learning. So, so sometimes I feel like um, I. Um, I didn't succeed with the Olympics, but on the long run, I'm, I'm happy with it. So mistakes are meant to be made, and uh, you have to learn by them. And that's that's what I do. Did you find it difficult from junior to become senior fencer, or from cadet to junior? Is it a big step, you think? Was it for you? For From cadet to junior, uh, it's just about dedication and your fire inside that you keep going. It's five years, you know, two cadets and three juniors. Afterwards, uh, from junior, at the end of junior, you start to compete uh, between senior seniors, and uh, you don't feel the pressure because you don't have to succeed so much. So then you do well, but then you, when you become senior and you ha you feel the pressure, that's when you have to think about just your you have to train a lot, and then you have to have the belief that you're going to be good on the long run. And uh, at first. Maybe the, the results are not going to come, but maybe they are. So you're, you never can be sure. My, my uh, performance was like going down and then becoming world champion and then Olympic silver medal. So How did you pick yourself up? So when normally like fencers go to competitions, they lose and they lose and lose again. Their confidence drops. And for me, that was definitely very difficult to come back from it. What gave you an extra something to, to come back? How training, training. If you train more than others, uh, multiple times more. Uh, I run uh, a lot. Uh, How much do you run? Um, usually, I, I do like seven to ten kilometers. And uh, how twice. many minutes? I think uh, like uh, 30, 45 minutes, around maybe one hour sometimes. So uh, that's I, I did extra. I put in the extra work, uh, physiotherapy. Um, treating treating my body well, nutrition wise, and running, and and just cardio, and all of that, what my teammates didn't do. So if you do extra, you feel like you're entitled to win. And the training, you beat them. That's good too. Yeah. What do you think? How important is it for you to have a coach on the fencing competition? How can a fencing coach help you best? I think mainly. Um, with the fencing coach you have to do the work uh, in the club but then when you get to it's very good if your coach is there 
and uh, then you should tell him in the, the during the breaks you should tell him what you think and then uh, they tell you what they think and that's a good cooperation because you know they are young adults like cadets and juniors they have to have their own thoughts and then they are going to be good if they have their own thoughts and they do that i think in the world championship final i think the score was 13-10 to yes. your opponent yes what went through in your mind and how did you manage to win that game eventually uh, i like to prove myself and imagine your whole family and friends are there and you want to show them how how much you got and i was like right now i i don't feel the pressure i just I have to uh, show them. And you didn't give up in your head? No, I, I felt like I can have it, but you know, the score wasn't indicating that. So I was like, yes, let's go and show, show them what I got. And uh, I did my actions on instinct. Yeah, and that's what came out. Mm -hmm. Before every point, you decide what you're going to do next or you leave it sometimes spontaneous? I think nowadays epifencing fencing is so uh, fast that you cannot decide before. I mean, you can have a plan in your mind, but uh, basically you have to uh, rely on your instincts. So I always, during training you can practice stuff, but when you get to competition, it's so fast, you have to decide so fast that it's just instinct and that's what it's, that's what it's good. Do you analyze your opponents on video, YouTube? I do. Um, at the World, World Championships in Budapest, uh, I was uh, watching them before every bout, like for one or two. I know what their basic attacks or defense is going to be. So it's good you, when you have a plan against someone, but that can be changed in like one minute, first, first minute of the bout. In the Olympic Games, which one was your most difficult match except the final? Uh, I think uh, for the top four, I was fencing Park. He's uh, the Rio Olympic champion in individual, and I was a bit afraid of him. But I knew I had have to attack. But still, um, I knew that a lot of people are watching, and uh, I felt like a bit of entertaining them. But still, I, I was focusing on the goal. And uh, Park was leading six, uh, seven, six, and uh, I remember that I winked at the camera. <laughs> and uh, and that g gave me uh, so much power that it's gonna be okay. The, the message was it's gonna be okay. Watch me, and uh, yeah, I just felt like really good uh, being a, a bit of a showman, but still focusing mm -hmm. a lot. Do you have your favorite moves or signature attacks you prefer the most? Uh, in cadet juniors, I had uh, this sixth uh, disengage and finishing a lower uh, lower side, but. Afterwards, I started um, exploring other stuff, and right now I, th I feel like I have uh, three and four main actions what I can do, and uh, I rely on on all of those to be unpredictable. And it's sudden that I can I can just pull what, whichever I want. So I wanted to ask, when you were a child, did you struggle with any movement that your coach was forcing on you, and you had to eventually somehow master, and now you are a champion of it? Uh, long question, short answer, no. <laughs> you were good at everything all the time? <laughs> I mean, no, I wasn't good at everything, but I didn't struggle so much. But I haven't had my sixth, my proper sixth, till like um, 19, 18, 18, 19. The sixth is always my weakness. Yeah, weakness. but Cheney does a good sixth. Cheney does a good sixth, and Alec too. Yeah, Alec too. When you're fencing a new opponent, do you prefer to push your own style on your opponent or you try to adapt against their style? It's a very good question. Like in fencing, I think uh, the, be the, the more you control, the better you, you, your chances are to win the bout. So I try to control a lot, but uh, you know, it's always just uh, trying from both sides to control the, the, the bout. I think uh, because of my size and my aggressive uh, attacks, I think I'm able to control most of my bouts, yes. Mm -hmm. What was your worst injury? Uh, I had problems with my knee, but the worst was uh, my, my wrist. Uh, I was overusing my forearm and uh, I had to... In 2019, the, the year of the World Championship, I had to go to surgery 
uh, and that was that was uh, very bad because it, it happened in January the the surgery and I had to come back till May fully recovered uh, and I had to give my best to to recovery. This mark reminds me of of taking care of my body and my health. So now the next thing that you're preparing is the Olympic Games and team event and that's what you're focusing at. And I see that the team is very much together. How would you describe your teammates in one word? Okay, that's good. Uh, so I will start with TB Andrashvi. He is the, the worker of the team. He works the most uh, of, of us on the pist. David, uh, which I like the most, uh, who, who I like the most, uh, is the, the artist of the team. And Mate is the, the killer. He is just, <laughs> he is the killer, definitely. And I'm, I'm the guidance for them, I think. With uh, my experience, and I'm older than them, uh, I like to help them and support the team and also be there if they need me. And we are going to so cross all of our fingers and good luck and thank you so much for coming. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm 12 and I train here at Knightsbridge Fencing Club. The world's best fencer coming to my fencing club just made me feel very privileged to have him around. Just to like, see him like, in person. I've watched him many times on places like YouTube, watching him do win competitions, but having him in person it really uh, energises you, I guess, for the fight. It's exciting, daunting, and kind of nerve-wracking at the same time because you know that you like have to be good. You know that you have to perform your best, and well, you're just very much inspired by him. Gurgly came to a club when he was fencing Alec, like the day before the competition. He kept on drinking little sp bottles of sparkling water, which just made me think, drink more sparkling water because why not? Hi, I'm Zach, I'm 12 and I train at Knightsbridge Fencing Club. I've been training at Knightsbridge for four and a half years now and I absolutely loved it. It helped my sporting abilities, it helps with your fitness agility. At the event I gained a sense of resilience from fighting in front of all those people. I found it really fun. It gave me a sense of like self-worthiness because it, when you compete it starts getting fun and then you get like rewarded. I'm sure that will help in my future competitions. I found me meeting him like maybe one of the best experiences of my life. I'm incredibly happy that Gurgle went on to win the World Cup in Vancouver. Hi, I'm Blue Carrington. I'm 12 years old and I fence in Knightsbridge Fencing Club. Juliana, she, she encouraged me to like ask him, so I just felt like, yeah, okay, I'll ask him. It was a bit nervous, and then when he said, yeah, I got, I got my kid on, did everything, it was quite fun. It was a great experience, but it was very tiring. Like, it's very physically demanding to like fence, turn to him, like he's so tall, and you have to move really fast on the piece. But it, it was a great lesson, because he taught me and he gave me tips every time I made a mistake. For example, like sometimes I went with, without foot temper, so he said you have to have foot temper, and then I practiced it, and then I got it. I just feel like privileged and like in, enjoyed being able to fence him, because like, again, like, I, I've never fenced someone from the Olympics. So it, it was very fun to be involved in the event. There was a lot of like team spirit. All the advice that I was given from the top fencers in the world, I was able to use in the gala against Matt. And even though I did mess up on some foot tempo, I was overall happy with my performance. I go to a lot of competitions, so I feel like I perform better in front of people. But I really, I really enjoyed it. That was the biggest amount of people I've done something in front of. Since the gala event, I've been in the competition and I've realised that it's a lot easier for me to perform under pressure now. I've been at Nightwish Fencing for five years and I really enjoy it. Like, 
Tomas, who coaches me a lot. It's, it's, I really enjoy just fencing here. I, I've made a lot of friends over the five years. I'm going to stay here for a long time, definitely.